And for groundwater contamination, it says there are two sources, either the fracking fluid, which is, has chemicals added and has picked up another burden of chemicals from shale rock. And shale rock has got, any oil and gas bearing rock has quite a big cocktail of chemicals, including benzenes and toluene and everything. And it says the second source of groundwater contamination is the target gas itself, the methane. However, it says based on one scientific study, I think that the current opinion is that contamination was caused either by poor well casing or leakage at the surface, but not from the fracking process itself. And then it gives us these two diagrams, very reassuring. So these are the Marcella shales. And what they say is that like this is thousands of feet deep, and they said that the water goes this deep, and that we, well, we were fracking down here, so we've got this big space between the water and the fracking. And that's all very well for the states, but as Eddie and Davide will tell you, here they'll be fracking above a thousand meters. So these fracture lines will be right in the middle of these aquifers. And given that they can't predict them, and the fracture networks are complex, I think we might have some problems there. So the environmental effects continued. It kind of gives us a list of uh, all the harmful compounds found in shale. But then it's very reassuring. It says that careful monitoring of fat food and the produced water is required to prevent contamination from this source. I didn't realise that careful monitoring could prevent anything like that, but anyway. And it goes on to say that strict regulation is required to ensure that well casings and linings are properly constructed. It goes on then to talk about trying to source the vast amounts of water. So it says that sustainable sources of vast volumes of water can be challenging. Um, and then it has a few little notes on possible environmental impacts of having to transport all this water construction of new roads and the increase in, in heavy traffic. So fracking fluid disposal, it's, uh, it's very light on this which is a major issue. So it just says there's more challenges in getting rid of it and then it gives us a little outline on how they get rid of it in the states. So they either evaporate it or they pump it back into the ground or they dump it into another state if they let them. And it says that fracking fluid may be or it might not, it be classified as mining waste in Europe, and if it is, it will be subject to strict conditions. And the report then expresses the hope that uh, hopefully the chemical-free fracking fluid will be developed. Now, it doesn't say that even if you do have chemical-free fracking fluid going down, it will be very chemical-rich on its way back up. So there's a bit of uh, a little section in it on the atmospheric emissions. So it says methane can be released. It then cites, there were two reports in the States, one from Cornell which said that shale gas, that methane emissions from shale gas make it worse than brown coal. And then there was another report funded by the oil and gas industry which said, no, no, that's not true at all, it's, it's actually fine. So it, it kind of mentions those two reports. Um, and then it just says that fracking operators should seek to minimize all emissions and that monitoring processes need to be actively enforced. So then we have a bit of regulation or lack of it in other countries and what the situation is. So at the time of the report, um, Quadrilla in the United Kingdom had voluntarily suspended operations uh, while the earthquakes were being uh, investigated. So they got the blame for them, but they said that they'd go on anyway. So fracking is back in action in the States. France has banned it May 2011. Poland it said that is no specific shale gas legislation, but they've recently granted over 100 licenses uh, to major players. In Bulgaria, they granted a license to Chevron, I think, in 2011, and then they changed their mind and they banned it in 2012, early this year. So in the USA, it's really major production, but it isn't allowed in some states like New York and New Jersey. In Australia, it's suspended in eastern New South Wales, and regulation is tightening now, <clears throat> tightening a lot in Australia, so they're not allowed to frack in state forests on, public, on good farmland, so they're pushing them out to areas where, um, where they see the land uh, is of having less value. And South Africa has a current moratorium on fracking. 
So that was best practice. So the last bit then was establishing best practice. And this is kind of, was basically very aspirational, this part of the report. And they said that there's four areas for best practice. So they talk about monitoring assessment and then they say that, um, you know, that the people who have to monitor and control this have to be adequately resourced and properly trained. And, and the people who will be responsible for monitoring it will be the Commission for Energy Regulation. And they have already told us that they have neither the staff nor the expertise to, uh, to monitor this so that they'd have to buy it in. And the only place you can buy in this kind of expertise is from the oil and gas industry, which makes me worry a bit about the, uh, the kind of regulation we have. So then it talks about materials and resources. So it says that the wells must be properly lined, that the companies must try and capture as much gas as possible, that they must try and you know, reuse the fracking fluids. And it says further research is needed. And then it talks about media coverage, media coverage and public debate. And it says that everybody must be open and honest with the people in this area where fracking is going to go on, that they should come and tell us honestly what's going to happen. So it'll be nice, we're looking forward to it. So the summary, which came as a real shock to me after all that, was that the published studies suggest that there is a low and probably manageable risk to water. So this is based on seven studies. And then it says, less well known are the potential impact on the atmosphere from methane and the earthquake risk. So he does cover himself and say, oh, it's a very small number of studies, but this is what they say. So it says more research is needed, regulatory bodies need to examine all the research, and it said the regulation should come from, it should be European-wide regulation is the best way forward for regulation. Just my own observations on this is that the report is based on seven peer-reviewed papers and nearly all the other references are either oil and gas companies <coughs> or the newspapers or something else. And the focus of this report is, is very, very narrow. It glosses over the major issues, <clears throat> and the language is very soft. I mean, it talks about challenges, and, and then we're going to depend on strict regulation. And in this country, we're not very good at regulation. We see where banking regulation has brought us. And, and it says like, and then we're kind of going to depend on the operators themselves to minimize release of gas and line well casings. So that's pretty much the Aberdeen report. Um, if there's any questions afterwards, I'll, I'll take them. Thank you very much.